Yo guys, welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of my F1 2019 career mode here today as we arrive for the Russian Grand Prix. And if you guys missed the last episode at Singapore, you can go watch it by clicking the link in the top right hand corner of your screen in the card annotation above. And that will give you guys a chance to watch that race before we jump into any major spoilers here this weekend. But today we are here at the Sochi Autodrome and you can see on screen we do have a chance of rain this weekend for qualifying specifically. The race is going to be dry, which is good because the last race in Singapore was a wet race and... Uh, that was a very, very, very long Grand Prix, and I don't really want to do that over again. But as you can see on the R&D chart at the minute, we are still first, and of course the McLaren car is maxed out. Racing Point have pushed on, though, and they've brought some upgrades to this race. Alfa Romeo remain in third place, along with Williams and Red Bull not too far behind. But uh, only Racing Point really making progress this weekend, and uh, you know they're the team to watch out for. They're our main rivals in the championship, in the constructors, and also the drivers in the form of uh, Perez mainly. And you can see here currently we're now in qualifying at Russia, and like I said before, it was a wet session, and... Um, it went from wet to dry and it's quite tricky to find the right time on track to really set a good lap and I actually went for my first run here and I did about three time laps and my last one was the best one and um, the last one was actually a really really good lap you can see here currently I'm on my second attempt and we're already two tenths up here as we're trying to improve on our previous attempt and unfortunately I threw that advantage away on the second lap as if we go to the end of the second two I threw it away you can see there were a tenth down and it stayed that way pretty much for the rest of the lap until the last couple of corners where I managed to just find a little bit of time and uh, I got a really strong uh, last two corners and actually improved at the end by about a tenth. So we end the lap strongly and move up to seventh place. Nine tenths off the pace though, so we need to improve. And this lap was actually really, really good. And uh, we're going to run board for the entirety of the lap as it was my best lap in qualifying. So here we go. That was turn number two. You want to try and break as close to the 100 meter board as you possibly can. And now towards turn three, or sorry, turn two, into turn three, it's important to really get that good exit and uh, well, try and keep it flat as long as you can realistically before you have to kind of lift a little bit and play around with the throttle along turn three. And now to turn four, you want to really focus again on taking a big chunk of inside curve quickly back on the gas on the exit. And so far, two turns up on our already even better first sector from the last attempt. It's looking pretty good here. And uh, so we make our way into sector two, a tenth of a second down currently on George Russell, who's setting the pace for Red Bull quite surprisingly as we now go into sector two. Looking for a lock up, we just about get away with it and manage to get the car turned into the right hander as we now open up the line for this left, where it's kind of like a double apex left. Important again to get the power down as soon as you possibly can and go flat out as Perez now drops into the 139s for a racing point. We now kick off onto the back straight and currently seven tenths up on our previous attempt. It's looking pretty good as uh, two sectors are down. And if we can bring this home, I'll be really, really happy as if we go across the second sector split. And currently we are about two tenths down, three tenths down on Perez. So a purple sector two and a really good lap up until this point. And we find even more time going underneath the bridge. And we're nearly a second up here. And this is where the lap actually peaked. I made a mistake now going into this left hand. I got a bit too wide, missed the apex. And I got some rear lock up. And that, that made me go a little bit wide. And I threw away about a tenth and a half to two tenths, unfortunately for us. So annoying because I was a, a second up. And we've already thrown away two tenths. We went a bit wide again here, just locking up, missing the apex slightly. And we throw away another tenth and a half as we go to the final corner, trying to push the lap to the limit here. In the end, we improved by seven and a half tenths, but there was definitely, I reckon, three tenths we left on the final sector alone, unfortunately for us. And uh, we only go P8, and I tried to go out again on a fresh set of inters, and uh, the track just started to dry at the wrong time, unfortunately. And uh, I tried to improve, but it just wasn't happening, unfortunately. We just couldn't find the pace. The lockups were becoming too frequent. And generally speaking, the, the, there was so much understeer, too much oversteer. The car just started to feel a bit horrible, really. It's the, it's the kind of sign when you want to go to the dry tyres. And uh, you can see here, we are half a second down on my first attempt. I tried to go for yet yeah, another lap, but then the rain completely stopped on this one. And uh, I was trying, but six tenths down, going to the back straight, pretty much. You can see here, um, just get a big snap of oversteer and just trying to hold it. But the car is just not really responding that well. And I just kind of accepted, okay, you know what, that's it. The, the session's done. Uh, the track's just not quick enough anymore. At least not for me anyway. For they are, they can still seem to go at full pace, but I can't go full pace in these conditions. So I backed off and uh, gave up on the lap, which is a shame. But, you know, overall, our actual time lap was really, really good. And like I said before, I was really happy with the attempt. And besides the final sector, where there was three tenths of a second, it was a good lap. And I do think, if you look at the uh, pecking order, we're currently in 11th place at the end of the session. And Sainz only got ninth, surprisingly. But I do think fourth place was possible. I do think I had a 139 in me, and I think... Had we got that good final sector, I think that would have been the lap. So, yeah, overall, disappointing qualifying, but uh, we're going to try and turn it around in the race tomorrow. Hopefully, Sainz also can pull it out of the bag because we need to turn this around after a disappointing Saturday. So, let's jump into the race and let's get racing here for the Russian Grand Prix. Welcome, one and all, to the Russian Grand Prix. 
We're just a stone's throw from the Georgian border here at Sochi as we get ready to begin the race that served up an absolute cracker back in 2015. A last lap collision between Kimi Raikkonen and Valtteri Bottas sparked controversy in that race, so let's hope the racing is just as tight today. Built on the shores of the Black Sea, the Sochi Autodrome is a 3.6 mile tour around some of the venues built for the 2014 Winter Olympic Games. Close barriers may make overtakes more challenging, but with 56% of the lap taken absolutely flat out, we certainly won't be wanting for pure speed. A fitting arena then to do battle at the pinnacle of motorsport. A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Let's talk about Martinez. No grip penalties, no mitigating circumstances, just a poor qualifying performance and a very disappointing start position for them today. It's not a nice feeling, I promise you. They've got a quick car underneath them, but they've got onto the grid today and they need a pair of binoculars to see the start lights. They'll be desperate for a good start to make up for some of that deficit. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he starts from pole position. And it's Pierre Gasly in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Ricardo, George Russell and Leclerc, Hamilton, Hulkenberg, Fiat and Martinez, Bottas, Raikkonen, Alexander Albon and Magnussen. Norris, Vettel, Roman Grosjean and Lance Stroll, Sainz and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid and with lights out just moments away it's time to go down to the track. Right, so here we are then on the grid in P10, actually. We got promoted by a position after qualifying due to a penalty, but still quite a long way off, and uh, we've got a lot of work to do. I believe Carlos got the penalty, so that's unfortunate. So he's going to be even further back, and as a team, we're looking in a bit of trouble this race, and uh, our championship is looking slightly in jeopardy, so we've got to try and pull something out the bag, and to do that, we are going to start the race on the medium tyres, because I believe the AI, even though everyone's got a free choice of tyre, everyone's still going to start on the softs, I'm going to go into the mediums and try and take a leaf out of the eSports strategy, and uh, get the mediums out of the way early, and then use the softs for the majority of the race, we're going to do 13 laps on medium, 14 on the softs, possibly 12 and 15, I'll, I'll, I'll see how we go, but either way, we're going to start the race in the mediums and get that tyre out of the way and hopefully we can stay competitive. In terms of fuel, we're running one extra lap of fuel. I'm actually going to crank that up to 1.5 because I thought we're going to need it to get back for the field. But uh, that's the strategy. No rain expected and it's going to be an exciting race, I think, especially because we have to make this overtake. So it's important to get a good start and hopefully keep the pace in the first in. So let's get racing and it's now time for the Russian Grand Prix. Right, here we go then. Start very important here as we get ready for the five red lights. Lights out and away we go. We don't get off incredibly well. It's definitely not my worst start, but we are kind of boxed in at the minute. I've got Mercedes swamping me to the other side, both of the finished drivers. As we go towards turn one, I'm going to go to the outside. Try my luck around the outside here. There's Kafia. I'm going to get squeezed onto the curb, so I have to back out. But we do manage to get back past the Mercedes. Bottas trying his luck around the outside. I'm going to have the better line, though, through turn three. We're going to close off the inside into turn four. As now it looks like somebody else is trying the outside Bottas again. But we defend nicely, keep him behind. And that's exactly what we want in terms of car placement and defending. We've got Kvyat in front of us here on medium tyre. So he's someone we need to get past straight away. And then from what I can tell, most people in front are running the softs. And I can see both racing points right in front of me there. So they're not that quick. Uh, so we're putting the pressure on Daniel Kvyat here in his home race. He goes defensive so for some reason. That's going to put him massively under pressure as uh, so we go onto the back straight. Let's see if we can try and get a good exit here and get past him straight away and make a way into to the top 10 and more specifically into the top 9. Here we go, engine cranked up to full power. We're slowly gaining on him. We're going to go to the outside which then becomes the inside. On the brakes, no locking up preferably, keeping it nice and tidy. And there we go, we just about close the door on him and go around the outside and we make the move up into ninth place. Exactly what we needed. Uh, so now we can hopefully rely on Kofiat to hold up the cars behind on those medium tyres. Well, let's try and pick up the pace here and uh, try and stay with the top eight. Okay, entering lap three now. DRS has been enabled. Luckily for me, I'm just within Hulkenberg's DRS. I didn't think I would be, but I am, so that's crucial for us. Just struggling to hold on here to the top eight. They've got a little bit more pace than me. But uh, the good news is the racing points aren't making that much progress. I thought they'd be really, you know, making a lot of work of the traffic. The good news is as well, the Alfa Romeo's are quite high up as well, so they could be in a good chance to win this race. But so far, so good. It's all 
going relatively according to plan because uh, my race isn't that great, but at least the racing points aren't progressing that much. Hulkenberg doesn't have DRS, so that's going to help me really close the gap on him. As we now make our way to the final sector, hopefully I can make a pass on the pit straight next time round. I've got to be closer than this though. That was a bit of a scruffy under the bridge section. We've got a flag further back. We'll find out who that is shortly. Looks like a Mercedes, I think. Let's focus on Hulkenberg though. Nice and tidy through there. There we go, job done. All right, let's get past him. I'm a little bit far back, but I think I should still be within range. Looks like it wasn't a retirement. That Mercedes might have just got spun round. By the way, here we go. We're gaining on Hulkenberg. Engines showing small signs of wear. Power output will be down. Down the inside we go. Job done. There we go. Textbook overtake. Hamilton up next. Let's see if we can try and uh, keep ahead of Hulkenberg and try and pull away. Pace is still good. Hulkenberg's just hanging on to DRS. But we're doing a good job here. The guys in front aren't really pulling away. And 2.9 is a perfectly manageable gap for the next stint on the soft tyres. It'd be nice if they could battle a little bit in front. They're all just kind of running in a procession at the minute. If they start battling, that's when they really lose time. But for now, they're not that far away. And no one's really pulling away in terms of the leaders. So it's looking good. Okay, I can see battling in front. Finally, they're starting to get a scrappy. Which is what we want. They'll start to lose time. We're also pulling away from Holkenberg quite a bit. And Perez is the car in front of us, which is good. He's battling with the Red Bull, it seems. There's actually both racing points going side by side. And they're going side by side again here. As Hamilton up takes Perez, but you can see now how much time they've lost. This is perfect for us. I don't care about anybody else except for the racing points, and as long as they're not scoring big points, no pun intended, then that's good news for us. Some information on Russell. They're slowing down. It seems like there's some kind of problem with their car. Okay, he's I believe the red ball in front of the racing points. You can see him in front. That's Russell, so. This is good news for us again, and so we're going to gain a position. That does mean the racing points gain a position as well, but at least it will cost them time. Crucially, it's Hamilton who's the one who's got through, and Perez is the one that's being held up. So this is good news for us. They're losing so much time, that's actually going to give us DRS, I think. We're that close. Yes, it is. There we go. We've got ourselves within range. Let's try and get past Russell if we can, and try and follow Perez, and lose no time whatsoever. Here we go. Gaining. Full power. I've actually got the run on Perez a little bit here. Just going to hold the inside line. We're not going to pass Perez. Obviously, we're on a slower tyre. But we're right back into contention now. And all of the hard work that the racing points put on the soft tyre has gone undone, which is exactly what we started on this tyre. Because now we should have the advantage in the next part of the race. No one pits yet, though. All the leaders staying out for now. Oh, Perez locks up there. We kind of follow him through. Again, I'm not going to pass him. This is a good chance for me to save a bit of fuel on the RS and just study him a little bit. He's also dragging me back up to Hamilton anyway, so it's working out okay for us. We can do this. Track extension there, running a bit wide. I wonder if we're overheating possibly in the front end. Okay, we've got our first few cars in the pit lane, but none of them are racing points. So it looks like the racing point does have better tyre wear than other cars. At the minute we're keeping up with Perez, we're matching his pace and we're just staying in the DRS which is perfect for me. And he's not pulling away from us, so that means he's going to be perfectly set up when we go into the soft tyres in the next in to hopefully make a pass. Can I expect him more cars to pit, including one of the racing points, probably Perez. And there you go. So we're now going to lose DRS for a couple of laps, but like I said, we're going to shoot on this stint. And we're probably going to pit next lap for the soft tyres, to be honest with you. Box, box. We're coming in this lap. Right, let's push. Strong in lap, let's give it everything, like a qualifying lap. Let's see if we can maybe overcut Perez as well, make it a bit easier for ourselves. Strong in lap, matching my personal best up until the back straight, where of course we lose out because of the DRS I got. But we're looking good. Keeping Lewis in our sights. A little bit wide there, that's going to mess me up a little bit. Don't forget, box this lap. Pick up some oversteer, straight as qualifying as we go into the pit lane. Here we go. Get it slowed down, and there we go, right. Hopefully the strategy works. We're going to pit him from P3. I don't think we've overcut Perez. I think that's going to be a little bit too unrealistic. Unless Perez got held up possibly in some traffic of some kind. But, oh my god, look at that train of cars there. That's because of George Russell. Oh my god, I didn't notice. This could be interesting. We might feed out right in front of that. Go, go now. That is going to cause havoc. There are so many cars there. Oh my days. Right, let's see where we rejoin. That's okay, Carlos shouldn't get held up. I'm going to turn the engine up here because we're going to need it. 
full power already here, really abusing the pit exit, but unfortunately we do rejoin just behind it. There's Perez. Had our own one more lap and uh, we could have potentially overcut Sergio, but either way, a lot of traffic. This is a big opportunity for us to make progress. There is an Alfa Romeo right at the front of it who's probably going to win the race because he's cleared the traffic already. Putting Perez under pressure already here. Oh, that's a beautiful switchback. Side by side with the Mexican. I'm going to try and go around the outside. There's not much space out there. Off track limits, but I couldn't really go anywhere else. Down the inside we go. And we take Perez. There we go. Nice move on the inside. Now we've got to try and stay in front here because Perez will have the RS on us. And let's try and get past some more cars here. There we go. We stay in front of Perez. Now can we get past Land though? We've also got Williams down the hard tyres. Interesting choice. Hard tyres around Sochi. Down the inside of Norris. It's a close one. Norris does leave us some room. We're going to go for the switch back though. As we make the move. We're going to be on the inside. Into the penultimate corner. There we go. Job done. It's Leclerc on hard tyres, surprisingly. No cars in the pits. As we continue on our way, let's try and make some more progress. Nice little switch back there. We've got the momentum. We don't quite get the acceleration. We're going to go for the switch back again here. There we go. Textbook wants it again. Right on the outside. Can we do it? We're going to try it. Again, not much room to work, but we do make the move. Perez, oh sorry, I should have said Leclerc on the outside, but we are going to take the inside line. Carbon copy of the Perez overtake as we make more progress up to P7. Hamilton up next. Let's try and get past him as well. There's also an Alfa Romeo getting past the Toro Rosso. That Toro Rosso pits. Hamilton trying to get the slipstream. Also kind of going defensive from me. Again, to the final corner goes defensive for some reason. That's going to give me the much better exit. We're not going to be able to run in this engine mode much longer. We're about a lap over target. Drop down to mix too soon. Well, look how easily we just walked past him on the straight in a, a racing point. I've never done that before. That car's always been historically quick. I do wonder if he maybe had his engine turned down because that was a very easy overtake. I've never passed the racing point on the straight with such ease. But we're up to P5. Ricardo in front. Let's get past him as well. Well then, as you'd expect, run the back of Ricardo here. As we go into the back straight, we're going to pick up DRS, of course. This should give us a fast up of the Grand Prix as well, hopefully. As we wind up the engine, get the momentum, we're going to blast past the Alpha. Go to the left-hand side, which will become the better line for the next brake zone. And there we go, pass Ricardo with ease. Up to P4, Alex Albon up next. Not sure if he's yet to appear or whether he's actually on strategy. Either way, I think uh, we're going to catch him up quite easily. I think he's yet to pit, to be honest. So we are on a net P3, I believe. Only Verstappen and also Gasly remain as uh, Albon pits. That's going to release me into my net third place. Let's see what this lap is across the line, if it's purple or not. Yes, it is into the 129s. Right, let's hunt down Verstappen and Gasly, although if we finish here, I'll be more than happy to be honest with you. Some information on Verstappen. They have some kind of mechanical problem. Oh, that's perfect. You'd love to see it. So Verstappen will start struggling. That's a problem for both Red Bulls in this race here today. But it's looking like P2 is going to get served up on a plate. Verstappen struggling with his Red Bull. Let's hunt him down. I think Gasly might have a bit too much pace to be honest with you, looking at the minimap. Similar to the last race, really. He was quite quick in Singapore well, let's see here we go hopefully I've managed to just about got myself into the RS range of Verstappen here we go this should be an easy overtake I think we've got a lot of straight line speed in this car on the setup around here and here we go we're gaining on Verstappen let's make this a definitive overtake 360k is almost down the inside no lock up just keep it nice and tidy and there we go job done up to P2 and we're still you know 10 laps to go really 10 full laps to go we could still catch Gazi, but I'm a little bit concerned about later on once the tyres start to fade and you know those in the medium start to get the advantage on me. So it's important to get a gap out to Verstappen and the cars behind. It seems they fixed whatever the problem was. They're coming back up to speed. That's probably going to be for George Russell, who had the problems first. I'm guessing. Either way, it doesn't affect us. The racing points are starting to make some progress now. Hamilton up to third, and Perez is not too far behind in P5. They're starting to push and uh, try and make up the positions. Meanwhile, I'm actually quicker than guys, and I'm actually catching a little bit. Whether I'll have enough, I'm not quite sure, because my tyres are starting to fade a little bit already. The gap to Pierre is just kind of staying the same at the minute. I'm not really catching. It's floating at around 1.6, which is fine. Like I said, if I don't win, I'm not too disappointed. We have won the last five races, so second place isn't going to do any harm at all, especially with our title rivals behind us. So, like I said, we'll just focus on maybe bringing this one home and uh, play 
you know, the experienced game, the veteran game that we've, you know, we've been here before, we know what to do. Keep it nice and tidy, keep it nice and clean, no mistakes. I'm just trying to close in on Gasly here. One second is the gap. He hasn't actually pulled away. I don't have DRS, unfortunately, but I don't think we're going to have enough, unfortunately. I really expected the Gasly to pick up the pace. The AR always go quicker at the end of the race because they're coded to find the fastest up of the Grand Prix, but so far he's yet to really pick up the pace. I've managed to get myself within DRS, but I'm not really close enough, I don't think, to really use it. It's one of them ones where you kind of have it, but it's not really doing anything at all. Gasly will just hold on, I think, for the race win, but still. We pushed him all the way, and dare I say, one more lap, and I might have had a chance, but we just run out of tyres when it mattered, really. But still, it's going to be P2 for us here today with the fastest lap. That will probably mean a nice amount of points. I don't think Carlos is on, on course to score any points, I might be wrong. But either way, for us, P2, 18 more championship points, possibly plus one. As Gasly wins for Alpha, we come through for P2, and our five-race win streak comes to an end. Brilliant. Brilliant job, mate. That's a fantastic podium. Super driving, really strong pace. Very, very happy. A victory for Alfa Romeo. The team will certainly be celebrating tonight. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed. It's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Looks like they're on their way out to the podium now, and what a result this is! And a popular one with the crowd as well. Great stuff to see the Alfa Romeo team on top here today. You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? You must be happy with the result today. Your team must be ecstatic with how you're performing. Appreciate your time. Right, so looking at the final race results, Pierre Gasly wins for Alfa Romeo. We come up in second place and do indeed score the extra points, so 19 points for us. And Hamilton scores the final spot on the podium for Racing Point. Daniel Ricciardo, P4 in the second Alfa, ahead of Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen. Charles Leclerc, P7. Nico Hulkenberg in eighth. Very strong result there for him in the Renault, ahead of Albon. And Carlos Sainz does score the final point, and he was just behind Albon and Hulkenberg on track. So a couple more laps, and it maybe could have been P8 for Carlos from P19 on the grid. Danny Kvyat misses out on the points along with Magnus. Norris, Stroll, Bottas, Russell, Giovinazzi, Grosjean, Vettel and Raikkonen. No retirements here today. In terms of the standings, we now lead by 78 points over Sergio Perez. And it's looking pretty good with, I believe, five races to go. Our six races, and I think, yeah, with five races to go, we could wrap this up in two races' time if we keep the gap above 75 points. Carlos Sainz in sixth place. He's quite a way behind Hamilton now. It looks like he's going to finish in P6 in the other McLaren. In terms of the constructors, we are 36 points clear of racing points, so the gap stays quite healthy moving into the final five races of the season. And overall, guys, that is going to be it for this episode here today. We're not going to do any upgrades because the car's already maxed out and uh, we're just saving points for the reset. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and also turn on notifications to not miss any videos from me and also finally check out these two videos on your screen. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next one very soon.